While situational leadership by many is considered to be one of the most influential and highly regarded leadership styles or leadership models uh, to this day, and it's still widely used uh, among private as well as uh, public sector type businesses. And it's a, a leadership style that began uh, approximately 30, 40 years ago and was developed by Paul Hersey and Ken Blanchard. Uh, Ken Blanchard is a name you're probably familiar with. Uh, he is the author of The One Minute Manager, uh, one of the most notable management how-to books uh, of all time. And so what they said, what they tried to determine is in every situation, there isn't one particular leadership style that is best. You know, that rarely is one style conducive to every single situation that you're going to encounter. Uh, not only are the situations different, but the people that you manage are completely different. They have different levels of competence, different skill sets, different confidence levels. And because of that, they may require a different leadership style to perform at an optimal level. And so what they developed, what they determined, is that the leadership style that the leader essentially engages in should be tailored to the developmental level of the follower. Meaning, depending upon the skills and the confidence level of the follower, the leader would engage in a different style. So as you can see here, uh, I have showing a, a particular table or grid, if you will, with four separate boxes. There's two axes, a vertical and a horizontal axis. And on the horizontal axis, you'll see there is what we call directive behavior. Okay? On the vertical axis, you'll see what we refer to as supportive behavior. Now, let me define these here real quick. Directive behavior is the extent to which a leader engages in one-way communication, meaning they spell out what the follower's role is. They tell the follower what to do, when to do it, and how, and closely supervise performance. Okay. Now you can see that there's a spectrum, of course. On the left-hand side of the table, we have very low directive behavior, and on the right-hand side of the table, we have very high directive, uh, directive behavior. Now on that vertical axis, you'll see we have supportive behavior. Supportive behavior is the extent to which a leader engages in two-way communication, meaning that there is a dialogue that goes on there. Uh, there is listening, they provide support, they provide encouragement, they facilitate interaction and involve followers in decision making. Now, one thing I might add is when anyone hears the word directive, they automatically associate that with being mean. And that's not what this is. That has nothing to do with uh, how you treat somebody, but more to do with how you convey information. Okay, and you're going to see where this comes into effect as we kind of progress through a couple of scenarios over the course of this brief video here. Okay, so from what you can tell, we have four different boxes. Uh, we have directing, which these are all leadership styles. We have directing, we have coaching, supporting, as well as delegating. Okay, now you're going to notice towards the bottom half of your screen here, there is a, another table which outlines a couple of different things with regards to competence and commitment. Okay, when I refer or say the word competence, uh, what I'm referring to is someone that is skilled. They know exactly what they're doing. They know how to perform the tasks, duties of the actual job that they're fulfilling. Now, commitment has to do with your confidence level. How committed are you to the actual task itself? Sure, are you competent? Do you know what to do? But your commitment is, do you feel confident enough to show those skills? Okay. And so these are the two variables that, according to situational leadership, managers need to consider when choosing a particular leadership style. Okay. And these all have different effects depending upon which stage the, the follower is in. So you look at developmental stage one. Okay? The follower has very low competence, but they have high commitment. Okay? This is very characteristic when someone is first learning a new task or is new to the job. Okay? Uh, there's little or no prior experience a lot of times, but they're enthusiastic, right? The first time you try and learn something, whatever it would be, playing guitar, riding a bike, learning anything, there's this excitement initially because it's something new and you want to learn it. But your competence level, your experience, your skill in that task is still very, very low. 
Okay. Now, according to the situational leadership model, a leader would want to engage in directing behavior. Okay. And you can see directing from the grid towards the middle of your screen there. And directing behavior, you'll notice from the axis, is high in terms of directive behavior, but it's also low in terms of supportive. Okay? And the reason is because the leader is defining the role of the employee at this point. Okay? They're telling them what it is that needs to be done and how to do it because they still have a high degree of commitment. They're excited to learn the new task, so they don't need support with that regard, but they need a lot of structure because they don't yet know what they're going to be doing and how to do that. Okay? Now, moving up, you see developmental stage two is characterized by a follower who has some competence and very low commitment. Okay? And this is very characteristic when someone is starting a new task and two things happen. Okay? Either one, it turns out the task was actually more difficult to learn than the person anticipated. Okay? Or two, it turns out the task is really not that interesting. Okay? Whatever it is that you start, you find out, you know, this isn't really that fun. I don't want to do this. Okay? And so that, of course, causes your commitment to lessen, right? You're not as enthusiastic. You're not as excited to learn about it. You know, you think about when, you know, you learn how to ride a bicycle. And initially, you're really excited, so you're high on commitment. You're very low in competence. You don't yet have the skills yet, the ability to know or to do the actual task here. Uh, and then what happens? You try, you fall a couple times. You start to realize it's really not that fun. Your commitment goes down there. Okay? And this has to do with a variety of different tasks, of course. Now, according to the situational leadership model, a leader should engage in a coaching type behavior. And coaching is providing a, still a great deal of control and direction, right? We're still high on the directive behavior scale. Uh, but we're also very high on the supportive behavior scale. And so what that means is that the leader is now engaging in two-way communication. They're now providing support and encouragement because they're trying to increase that commitment level so they continue to work on improving their skills in this particular area. You'll notice they have some competence, right? That's because they've been introduced to the task. They've been actually performing the task for a, a brief period of time, but the commitment is lessening. So we need to get the follower to kind of bridge that gap, if you will, to make sure that they continue with the task, okay? Now, moving forward, You'll see in developmental stage three is characterized by a follower who has both high competence, okay, so now we are dealing with a competent person, uh, but, but variable commitment, okay? And variable commitment refers to commitment that is somewhat wavering. It, it kind of varies depending upon what's going on that particular day. It's not necessarily high, it's not necessarily low, but it, there's a certain level of, of deviance, if you will, where it it can change, which is not ideal. And what happens here is this is when the follower may have the skills necessary to perform the task, but they don't yet have the self-confidence to do that. You think about this from a managerial setting. You perform a particular task. You kind of model what it is that you want to be done. The follower does the same thing. They do it in a kind of controlled an environment where they're monitored, they have you readily available for questions, and then let's say that you start to kind of pull away a little bit and you realize they can perform the task on their own, whatever it may be. Maybe it's operating something like a cash register, and now you don't have to be there. So you begin to kind of back off. And still, even though the follower has the skills necessary to perform the actual task, there's still a little bit of hesitation because they haven't done so by themselves. You've always been there, right? And so that can cause a little bit of self-doubt. Okay, People can question whether or not they can actually perform the task. Okay, And that causes commitment to fluctuate from excitement to somewhat insecurity, if you will. Okay, Now, when a follower is in this stage, the leader should engage in supporting behavior. And supporting behavior is basically control of the day-to-day -day decision making and the problem solving will shift. It shifts from the leader to the follower. Okay, the follower now has the ability to control what they do, right? It's very low on the directive scale, but there still is a great deal of support.
you still touch base on maybe a bi-weekly or weekly basis uh, just to keep tabs on how things are going, just to encourage the particular person to make sure that they're continuing to work at a high level and offer any support that you can. But you don't need to be involved in the day-to-day -day because they know how to do the work. It's just a matter of you checking in every now and then to make sure that their commitment is still relatively high. Now the last stage of the developmental levels here that we're talking about for a follower is developmental stage four. And this is characterized by both high competence and high commitment. Okay? The follower has the skills and the abilities to perform the task and they know they do. They have the confidence necessary to perform the actual duties. Okay? In this particular stage you'll notice it's both low on supportive and low on directive behavior. Not only does the follower not necessarily have to engage in directing behavior? They don't have to tell the follower what needs to be done and how it needs to be done because they know. But they also have the confidence, the commitment necessary to actually perform the task or the job. And so they don't have to be as supportive. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the leader or manager doesn't need to check in every now and then. But they don't need to be actively involved in managing the day-to-day -day and providing frequent support. Okay, this is the last stage. This is when someone is, is really experienced in a particular task and they know how to do the work and they have the confidence to actually do that. So you might ask, well, what might this look like in an actual organizational setting? Well, it could include the leader and follower getting together and discussing the problem and agreeing on maybe a set of action steps on what needs to be done, but then the follower really goes and they implement those, they do what needs to be done, and there isn't a great deal of involvement from the manager or leader, whomever that may be. Uh, and so, as you can see, you're probably thinking of certain areas in which you fall into either category. And one thing to consider is that we typically don't fall into one category for every single task, right? There are certain things that we are good at and certain things that we are not so good at. And so to think that you would have to engage in a, a directing type behavior for one of your employees for every single thing is probably not accurate. There are some things where you might have more of a, a delegative approach and there are other tasks where you might need to engage in a directive type approach depending upon the task and the comfort level of the actual follower itself. So don't think that it's just simply one person and they fall into one bucket but you have to consider the tasks being done and the competence and confidence level of the actual follower 